Hey kids, welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium. Last episode we went on a bit of a dungeon crawl through uh, through the uh, dark upper floors of this of this uh, purportedly haunted building. Uh, we, we found some interesting stuff, although we didn't seem to make too much headway in terms of our main task of getting that body down and working on solving that uh, murder. So let's just take a look at our tasks quickly. Investigate doomed commercial area. <laughs> uh, we haven't uh, we haven't really investigated this this the uh, purportedly malignant entity uh, in there. Uh, I think I think that uh, our character doesn't really believe in that nonsense. Uh, but yeah, we found this uh, we found this antique rifle. And yeah, um, I've been thinking. Uh, I think it might be not a bad time. We got a bunch of tools, and I think it might not be a bad time to. Head, wait, maybe we can talk to her about what we found up there. Just want to double check here. You're alive and well. Don't keep me waiting now. What's in there? In that dark sarcophagus. <laughs> dark sarcophagus. Yes, yes, how was it? Tell her how ghastly it was. You know what she wants to hear. <laughs> no. Huh. What have we got here? Rigorous so oh wait, volumetric shit da, 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 what do we got here? Is that telling us that we Oh yeah, so that means we've internalized Okay, so I think we just we just passed enough time to maybe internalize this one? Let's trace your tongue. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I think we, I think we may have internalized. Yeah, it looks like we've internalized the lo lonesome long way home, which I guess gives us a plus one to, oh, breakthrough imminent. Oh no. Okay, we don't have the, uh, we don't have the solution yet. Okay. Right. Um. Yeah. So what are we going to say here? It was a charnel house, failed business enterprises, leeching life energy from this bookstore. Uh, I think I'm going to say this. Honestly, a dump. Nothing to see there. Just heaps of garbage. Someone should let the sunshine in. Uh, I don't know. I feel like we uh, we could piss her off by doing that. But this is uh, this is insane. I'm saying this. But what else did you find? Did, you, did anything survive? No, of course not. Have you located the entity? You don't have anything of substance to tell her until you've found that entity of hers. Uh, that's all I can say for now, book peddler. Thought complete. Lo lonesome long way home. Okay. Here we go. Home awaits. Walk past Station 41 and through the market. Past the Boogie Street spearhead to the other side of the lake, the frozen eye at the center of the district. Then past the video rental store on the corner, there at the end of the street lined with pine trees, a small house no larger than a matchbox, 11 Voyager Road. You no longer live there, those times are gone, and, th and so are those people. Why did you come here? Why are you still here? And where's the dealer? You have to get back to work. That's all you have for now. Okay, learning cap for perception raised to five speeds gives one, uh, what's, I don't I can't remember what that one is, P-S-Y, oh, I guess that's our attribute, yeah, psyche, hmm, speed gives one, I'm not sure what that means, I guess we'll figure it out, hmm, That, I, it seems like this is all positive, though. It doesn't seem like we've got any negative effects from that one. Like this one here takes away our logic. All right. Yeah. So what I was going to say before I got into that that nonsense is, um, I, I we we picked up a bunch of new tools, 
and I kind of feel like we might want to actually loop back and see see if there's any of these white checks that we can retry. Um, well, so I guess we can look at our map. Map here. Uh, damaged ledger, interfacing medium, map wall, interfacing challenging, challenging legendary heroic. Yeah, hmm, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe there's not much we can retry, but I, you know, we do have some sort of new tools that we got out of his, uh, his vehicle there, and it might be useful to kind of come back here briefly and see if there's anything new we can do. Okay, no, there's nothing. So that we need visual calculus for that. Wait a second though, we also can increase we can increase a skill, I think. We have a skill point, so again I'm gonna look at the body. Is there something? Inland Empire. Hmm. Oh, and was there something we were supposed to ask him? Cash you say I'm throwing rocks? Alright, Elsa saying the cool no. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got! Irregular speech patterns over confidence. Could this kid be on drugs? Uh, the body, what do you know about it? I don't know if we already asked this, to be honest. Shitload pig, what's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. Okay, I feel like we've already... already done this. Pig's choking, he's totally choking. Okay, yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think there was anything... anything new there. Uh, we opened that already. Right, I think so, if I remember correctly. Just feel like there's maybe something in here. This door here, we were unable to open, I think. Uh, we can retry this one, though. I think. It's a white check. Why am I looking at this pile of roofing material? Ah, check success. Awesome. Because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of Eternite. That's why they're too orderly. Okay. I think that's a check that we failed before, if I remember correctly. Sweet. What is this then? A tool shed? He peeks inside. Let's investigate. Indeed, 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 indeed. Okay. <coughs> Very cool. Let's look around. An empty tube of magnesium 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 supplements. I feel like we have some of that already. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, there's a ladder, I guess. Oh, okay, that's going upstairs. Whoops. Okay, I'm gonna go back down because I want to kind of do one room at a time. Otherwise, I I will I will forget things. I'm already forgetting things. All right, let's take a look here. Cured pig's head. It looks mummified. Gross. Silver plate with traces of bone yellow powder. Oh. Electrochemistry. <laughs> Electrochemistry. Be still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. There's a good, vague way to ask where he stands on drug use. Professionally, I mean. <laughs> uh... Is this what this is suggesting we say? 
There's a good way, vague way to ask where he stands on drug use. Uh, that's not it. Let's let's say this. It's gonna entertain the rhetoric part of our brain, which is supposed to be our signature skill. I've heard amphetamines make you a really good detective. Are you a really good detective? No, I'm just a regular detective. Thank you very much. Okay. Ah, we're kind of pigeonholed into this again. Hmm. Okay. I wasn't thinking about taking it, I swear. I was thinking about justice. Of course, detective. Swift justice. Don't worry. We don't have to investigate every trace of narcotics. The lieutenant points to the ladder in the corner. Yeah, swift lightning justice. Faster, harder. Justicer. <laughs> See that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? A secret path the local kids use. Wow, that's actually super useful. Uh, let's just finish looking around this room, though, before we uh, before we do that. Buster says, get out of the way or get fucked up. Okay, and then we got this. This is up here. Uh, money. Interesting. Okay. Oh, okay. I can go up here. Yeah, it's interesting. The, uh, the kind of pathfinding in this game. Uh, it's actually pretty good. Uh, what do we got here? Stairway is going to collapse soon. Like, so we shouldn't walk under it. <laughs> I think the doorway collapses on us. That's that's the end for us. Rest restoration pillars keep the ruins together. Uh, what's this? Postcard. Grand Courant 37. So we seem to be a bunch of postcards around this, uh, this world. Postcard depicts an ill-advised residential area overlooking J the Jamrock Quarter. Thirteen-story buildings line the hillside like sarcophagi, an ominous fog already rising from behind. These are the last boom years. In, in 39, the, projects, the project fails catastrophically, leaving behind an opiate and hepatitis B-infested slum. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, those postcards... I don't know whether those postcards are a sort of lore flavor or, or whether they're... Uh, they, they have some function in the game. Right, well, let's head up here. Or I guess we can go over there, too, maybe. What's this? Okay, NASA fed. We're accumulating quite a, quite a, quite a number of uh, health potions, as I've taken to calling them in this game. Um, definitely looks like we are finding a back way in here. More money! this. Is that something I can touch? I thought that was... No, okay. So that door is what? Locked? No. Oh, what about this one? That's, that's locked as well, I guess. Policeman cloak. Looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. <laughs> Look, Lieutenant, pointing to the flapping cloak. Someone has left his cloak behind. Yes, it's probably yours. It bears the RCM insignia, and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. He judges the drop. You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. Oh, man. Uh, I feel like this is like a quick save situation. Can I quick save in dialogue? No. Oh. Uh, this is a white check. You may retry it. Alright. 
Oh, it's 28 percent. Oh, we can increase the skill. Let's uh, let's do that. Let's increase savoir faire. I like this. I like how we can go into the menu in dialogue. Uh, I gotta say, I think it's uh, it's, um, I think that's really really useful. Our savoir faire is one. Uh, but I think it's being modified by. I think it's being modified by something we're wearing, maybe. So let's increase it. Uh, do level up. Oh, that's what that skill cap thing means, right? Something we have. This is this is the skill. The number of points we can put in any given skill, and I think that, that thought we just finished there, Long Lonesome Walk Home or whatever, increased the skill cap for one of these things. It was perception. Right. Okay, I'm gonna level up Savoir Faire. Uh, accept changes in clothes. Uh, and then I'm gonna go into my... Oh, I can't go into my inventory while I'm in dialogue. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I am gonna do this right away, though. Uh, let's just take a look here. Okay, we can take these shoes off. Can I, how do I remove them? Okay. Plus one drama. <laughs> Alright. Anything else here? If I take my shoes off... Oh, and these ones are also affecting our... Can I... Okay. <laughs> this is really silly, guys. Uh... Now what happens if I look at the coat? Medium, 72%. Sweet. Yeah, we've, we've, we've managed to increase our savoir faire up to four. Let's try this. Did, was that a pass or a fail? Check success. Success, okay. As you leap in the air, a chilly breeze engulfs you, sharpening your senses. <laughs> yeah, I bet you there's a chilly breeze. We're not wearing any pants. Uh, close your eyes, let your senses take in the world around or around you. Mm, let's not do that. Uh, I feel like we're going to fall and smash our head if we close our eyes. Continue to voice through the salty air. Oof. All right. As the concrete floor welcomes you, you realize it's been a while since you felt so alive, alert, and capable. It must be the adrenaline. I knew you could do it, the lieutenant exclaims. My climbing down might not have been as disco as your jump, but at least we can explore the harbor now. <laughs> that is hilarious. That is hilarious. Uh, we've finally done something that's impressed Kim. With your feet firmly planted on the concrete, the noise of the harbor rushes back in. Okay, uh, I, I'm going to put my pants back on. I, I love it. We just, you know... Wait a second, Kim. i got to take my pants off before I jump. <laughs> uh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, that's that's a net positive, isn't it? Patrol cloak, take all. Awesome. Uh, what do I replace with this? Does this replace our jacket? Esprit de corps. And what is the... This one gives us the same thing. And shivers. Okay, so that's just better. That's just a net, a net positive. Awesome. Uh kind of hate wearing these gloves, but, uh, like, I just, we look ridiculous, but, you know, might as well. So we don't have a, he a hat, and we don't have glasses. Interesting. Okay, can we now, like, open this door so that we don't have to do the jump again? I hope I didn't, I, ho I hope I don't have to, like, make, whoa, oh, we just opened the door, period. Interesting. Okay, I see. I see. That door wasn't... Alright, alright. I get it, guys. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go back out. Sorry for this uh, loading screens, but uh, but yeah, we know we can go in there now. I will check that out after. I want to kind of uh, finish in the area here that I started. Um, what do we got here? Collecting rainwater. that. You know. Got more bottles up here. Okay, I probably will go back in that door, to be honest. 
At least three packs worth of cigarette butts. Numerous empty bottles of Commodore Red and Potent Pilsner. Uh, I have a feeling that we've been here before. All those empty wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground. Someone partied really hard here. <laughs> yeah. Well, considering that our jacket was hanging there, I think that we've been up here before. Well, the lieutenant looks at you, then the bottles. Yes, I think we can say with relative confidence that it was you. I must have been on an advanced scouting mission to the harbor. <laughs> Uh, let's just move on. <laughs> let's just move on. Uh, what's this? Is this another door I can go through? I'm gonna go back to that door. I'm gonna go back to that door. Can I see this from here? Okay, I can go down these stairs and kind of into the harbor, I guess. So let's go back here. Yeah, I thought that there was like a staircase leading down into this door, and, and I realize now that, no, it's a roof, and this, this just goes into the building, so interesting. I really want to find that plastic bag. Uh, the help, the the uh, the loading screen keeps telling me, telling me to do it. All right, let's look around. Punch clock payphone. Uh, I'm not I'm not spending money on making a phone call. That's for sure. Radio is emitting strange buzzing sounds. Someone left the coffee machine on. The dark liquid in the pot looks almost sentient. Interesting. The standard office file cabinet at the door seemed to be locked. File cabinet. On a second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the Union just to leave their paperwork lying around like this. Let's see what's in, he thinks. Open the drawer. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Browse through the folders. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world, from Mundi, Grad, and even Lil Ilmara. And some materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol, Courant, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where imports are being sold. Anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Uh, I'll try this. I'll bite. Oh, man, we're having another lucky day with these successful checks. Whatever's hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. Look at the note. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo, Everett's shoes, special whirling borscht, water, Everett's plants, sweep office floor, more banners. <laughs> borscht, like the, uh, the beet soup. Love borscht. All items on the list have been crossed out, and the note itself is crumpled. Look, Kim, a to-do note with a list of errands for Everard. Everard Clare, probably, the, the head of the, the, the Bardell Union. He looks, he inspects the notes. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. The special borscht seems a bit odd on the list. Hmm. Can we take another look? Yeah, okay, it's the same. We get the same thing. Okay, let's close the drawer. Lots of looking around left to do here. What's this? Postcard. Another postcard. Uh, items. Postcard. The laminated postcard offers a glimpse across the river. A little more than a decade after the war, the eastern bank is already fully renovated. The hillsides are lush with gardens and residences. Someone's packed a small beige airship by the fountain. The postcard will sell for a pretty penny. Yeah, so I don't know. Are we supposed to sell these? We've got, what, three of them? Sell these, collect them. God, i got to say, uh, they're, they're so cool, I don't want to sell them. I feel like I'm a... Uh this is a Dewey typewriter. The model name is on the back. I feel like I'm collecting books in Morrowind, guys. I, I don't know if I want to sell them. Everyday worker equals member of the board is written at the top of the flyers. Hmm, this is actually... Can I zoom out so I can see that? Yeah. Below the flyers, the union logo and demand democracy. Hmm. Right. Uh, I guess we can go into the bathroom here and see what we see.
more magnesium. I don't think we haven't had to take any of these yet, so that's kind of good. Ah, neat office shades, visual calculus minus one drama. Yeah, well, I can use a little less drama in my life. That's fine. Uh, let's see here. Clothes. I am putting these on. Visual calculus. Uh, we had. Did we not have a visual calculus check? We did somewhere down. I think down in the. Um, down in the courtyard there, we had a visual calculus check, so that's awesome. Can we see, what do we look like with all this? Do we, do we have, a, oh yeah, it zooms in, I see. Interesting. Uh, I don't think they really suit us, but then neither do the gloves. All right, we came through that door. We've checked everything in here. Let's go through here. The door is locked and cannot be opened from this side without a pass card. Guess you have no choice but to talk to the union leader. Okay, so that's it for this room. Booth. This is the Night Watchman's booth. The name of the door reads René Arnoux. Listen, it's okay to take a few minutes to yourself, sit down, and have a breather. Huh. Failure. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to take a quick look inside. If you must, the tenant looks around, but please hurry, we're pretty easy to spot up here. Nothing incriminating catch your eye. The cabinets are clean, the spare sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on on the table. Take a picture. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man is young, dark skinned, and dressed in a royal carab carabinier uniform. Carabinier. Interesting. The girl is smiling playfully at the camera. Why did you take that? Something about this man piques my interest. I think this can be a side thing. Fine, he nods, but let's move. I don't want to be seen snooping around here. Okay. <coughs> we will, uh, we will cooperate with... We will cooperate with, uh, Kim here. Black and white photo of the girl is... Okay, the black and white photo of a couple posing in front of a Ferris wheel. The girl is young and pretty. The man clad in fancy uniform and smiling. On the back, a very steady hand has written the words... Revachal Fair, summer night, summer of '91. So if the, if we're in the '50s, '91 is a long time ago. Uh, I think uh, I think we. I don't know. I feel like uh, maybe maybe we just took someone's, you know, photo of their girlfriend, which which seems kind of merciless to be honest. Oh wait, wait, wait. All around you, great machines and ki and quiescence, quiescence. White pine trees are painted onto the screen covering, so they are. Looks like a forest under snow. This is kind of a cool antenna looking thing. Can I? No. A little bit, little bit hard to see, to tell, look at the perspective on this isometric thing here. We are, looks like we are in the harbor. This is the, the way to go here. Oh, it's very cool. The the art artwork though is very cool how uh, how this is all drawn. Crane control panel, a rusting control panel with several knobs, two buttons marked allume and éteindre. Allume means turn on, éteindre in French means turn off. So uh, allume actually also means like light up, like to light a match. But the word also means to like turn on a machine. And it tends, I mean, to snuff out or turn off a machine. Are fitted with use. It seems to control the large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, the, our, our encyclopedia is telling us the same thing as I just said. 
Wow. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> With a surprisingly quiet thunk, the crate places the container down. The harbor sleeps as the strike rages in the distance. This crane can rest again now that its purpose has been fulfilled. Its purpose? What do you mean? Making this container of co moving this container, of course, and the purpose for for which it was built for this purpose, it has acted, and now it will rest. <laughs> Can't see how that was worth the ruckus. He looks at the crate, except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. Ah, uh, Kim. The crane does not return to its original pos position. It does not move at all. Okay. Oh, did I miss some stuff up here? Looks like it. Or have we been up there? No, we haven't been up there. Okay. Interesting. Come on. Uh. Oh, money. 12 bucks. What do, I, what do I need, like 40 or something to, to pay for the hotel? Nasa fed. More Nasa fed. You see faded industrial lettering on the platform, Kvalsund. Kvalsund means uh, whale fjord in Arden. Uh, oh, well, we moved this container down cargo container door. Before you, before you stands a cargo container, just one of many in the yard. And I think there's something about this container. You do? Because I don't. Why, why not? There are a million containers here. Why are you fixing this one? It was hanging from the crane. You just picked one out because you wanted to interact with the cargo container. <laughs> We're not here to interact with containers. We're here to get the body down from the tree. Okay. I will, uh... I'll follow Kim's intuition here for now, although, uh, I think we'll be back. Okay, can I? Oh, I see. I go down here. Can I? Is there somewhere to go over here? Have we, like, blocked off a path by dropping this thing or potentially provided a bridge? All right, let's, let's keep moving here. Right, we're focused on getting the body down. Oh, no. This, we already went down. Finding this oh, over here, maybe. Yeah, I'm finding it a little bit hard to navigate the isometric view, uh, but just clicking around helps. Oh, the shipyard is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. Okay, sort of. We already heard. We're now on a big stack of containers. Money. Speaker tower is silent. There's no work to organize in the yard below. Oh, it's a speaker tower. Whoa, 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 whoa. The musk of oil and rust from the chasm in front of you smells like blood. Okay, that's locked. Uh, what if I equip something here? Uh, uh, tools. What if I put this in my hand? Awesome! Ultra series gloves. Half light. Interesting. Do I want to put those on? Uh, what do we got here? We have these gloves give us interfacing, these ones give us half light. For ultimate performance efficiency, these F-L-A-F-A-L-N Ultra Series gloves come fingerless and with a grippy padding covering the palms, making these ideal for quadrupedal movements or for lifting cargo. Let's put them on. They look a little bit less crazy than the, uh, the yellow, yellow gardening gloves anyway.
Uh, that looks like money to me. Take it. Industrial sized thermos. Smells like burnt coffee. More money. We are just making bank. This thing's container, container, container. Um, can I talk to this guy from across here or. <coughs> container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. Mm hmm. You don't say. The accent is so thick it's impossible not to notice he's Yubi from the vanishing peninsula of Yubi Suntz. Sick on Mundi. Hm. Container, container, used to be well pined. Container, container, now belongs to Everett. The tiny man is so engaged in his work he doesn't notice you. Uh, Everett, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there, how can I help you, master? The look in his deep blue eyes is as sincere as you've ever seen. Kind of makes you feel like an asshole for no apparent reason. <laughs> I see you're not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? A shadow passes over his face. Ah, uh, This kind of sucks. I'm not a scab, I'm a cop. Tell him I'm a cop. Uh, what is it with you people and scabs? Actually, I am, yes. Ugh. This uh, this is not a choice, guys. I, you know, I, I like I like I said, I love I, I'm really liking I'm really enjoying this game. Uh, I'm really enjoying this game so far, and I'm I'm particularly enjoying the dialogue. But but this is this is not a good choice. Um, we we don't uh, we we either kind of give him attitude or or we say that we're a scab. There's no option here to there's 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 no choice here basically. Anyway, I'll say this one. I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks are just folks, you know. And folks gotta eat. He doesn't seem to be waiting for you to answer. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. Okay. Um, alright. Well. I guess we'll just kind of ask him uh, a bunch of stuff here. Do with these con with the containers? Your UV right? Do you work here? Say, so do you work here? Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way, Leonard Belek. But everyone calls me Leo. The little man raises his hand in a welcoming gesture. I'm like Mr. Everard's right hand man, and when Mr. Edgar is out of town, and and Mr. Edgar's right hand man when Mr. Everard is away. He chuckles. Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right hand man, but she's a lady. A good-hearted chuckle again. <laughs> Who is this Miss Bofar? The lieutenant looks up at Leo. A real pretty lady with a skin like those Douai Sucre candy bars. Sweet, sweet and sugar candy bars, or my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down besides the radio. <laughs> But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here, and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay, he just answered that question. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this place would totally fall apart if you didn't shine the boss man's shoes, Leo. You see disdain in Lieutenant's dark eyes when they meet yours for a moment. He does not approve of you ridiculing this little man. Well, I'm trying to let ridicule. Oh, mister, I do a lot more than that. I really do most everything around here. Mr. Everett says I'm... Says, says many times I'm irreplaceable. He's still smiling, but his voice trembles ever so slightly. Oops. Uh, that was not my intention. <laughs> I wanted to, uh... Uh, but the... the I, guess, I guess that was belittling, though. Oh, well, whatever. Um... Are you Leo the, who wrote the note to make more banners? So we can ask about his race, but that seems kind of... Uh, not sure about that. What's in the container over there? I'm looking for the leader of the Dock Workers Union. Oh, you want Mr. Everard then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. He coughs, then continues immediately. 
Guys like Mr. Everett and Mr. Ed Edgar, his brother, are really good guys. Made Martinez what it is today. Mr. Everett and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. I don't know where I can find the man. Oh, Mr. Ev Everett is where he always is. In his office, of course. He points to the two joint containers on your right. Hmm. Um... in that container over there. Oh, that one. He looks at the container. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Okay. Maybe we'll open the container later. Are you the Leo who wrote the note to make more banners? Oh, yes, yes, he replies excitedly. I leave all kinds of notes for myself. That old head of mine ain't, ain't so good at keeping things in, in no more. I almost forgot about the borscht. What was that about the borscht? Oh yes, I've been taking special whirling borscht to the men every day since the strike started. The little guy chuckles merrily. It's very, very good. It makes a man feel so warm and happy. He shakes his head with a wide smile. I feel like I could take on Mr. Renaudin's boar dogs every time the lunch is done. What do you mean by taking this, this soup to the men? Is it for striking? Um, oh, absolutely, mister. What do you want to know? Where is everyone? The harbor is empty. Your UV right. Okay. I'm happy with that. What's this? The banner sags under the weight of rain and snow. White waves on red. Okay. Need to pass time by a book. Reading passes time quickly. Interesting. Right, so we are now, I guess, maybe in the office. Coffee in the giant thermoses is still lukewarm. A stair made of pallets leading up. And here is the, uh, presumably, Mr. Everard. Uh, let's, let's talk to him. For he was a walrus of a man seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. Let's get straight to business. There's a dead body in a tree. Welcome, Welcome Mr. Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsaragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat gestures to a tiny chair opposite his giant di giant desk. Uh, is that my name? Did I just find out my name? I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardieu's Union here in Martinez. The man relaxes into his chair and continues. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand. It looks extremely comfortable. This, the tiny folding chair on the other hand looks like a torture device. You go ahead. Right. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. I'd rather stand. Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner as equals. Take a seat. I insist. <laughs> All right. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men, reasonable men can be of great use to one another. Gives you a sly wink. So tell me, how can the head of the Debarges Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? <laughs> The chair you're sitting has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Jesus. Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Garte. Some people have no manners. It pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. He points to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically huge. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with the cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. 
So this this is sort of like a bribe, I think. Let's it again. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. I I don't know. I don't I don't think we're going to take the bribe. I think I think Kim will uh Kim will throttle us if we take that, but I'm not sure. Keep it. I'm good. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts then. He crosses his arms on his ample midsection and sinks further into his chair. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gum. Let me assure you, union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. And this sounds like blackmail. Lost gun. Lost gun. <laughs> Oh, I love the sound. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. Hmm. Oh, we had success there. Because maybe because we're wearing the, the jacket. Uh, should I be... I kind of want to do this in case we get killed by... Uh, <laughs> or we get game overed by this conversation. It's the first time we've actually been been hurt. Ah, uh, this is interesting. This seems implausible. Are you all right, Harry? You seem anxious. Well, don't be. Everything's going to be all right. Well, I think that's our name then. Harry Dubois. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Hand eye coordination, it was loaded. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two. Two, <laughs> two barrels loaded. <laughs> Oof. Kim, uh, Kim. Officer, we will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Clare's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. <laughs> this is a red check. Uh, wow, we have no choice, do we? If I say this again, oh, it, okay. I wouldn't be okay. so sure about that. Check failure. Try to say cool. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. Damaged morale. It's just Mr. Dubois who keeps repeating. What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat another one of those, whatever they're called there. Mr. Dubois! Mr. Dubois! Harry! Large man snaps his fingers, but to no effect. You're, you're in some stupor. There are no Harrys. Let your mind go to a safe, go to your safe place. Uh, I don't know. Not much of a choice here. <laughs> Um, this is fine, though, by the way. When I when I was talking about that other dialogue option with no choice, I, I felt like we should be able to maybe say something else. But this uh, this is a choice between two bad things because we're in a bad situation. This is this is good. Keep sliding down the chair like a jello shot. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? No, because I I have these. Maybe you could use your hands somehow, in a kind of throwing motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. <laughs> oh yeah, man, I'm fucking great. Uh... Don't be dramatic. I can see your condition is not terminal. What an odd demonstration of... Huh? You got me, Harry. 
I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time, and I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Thanks, Kemp. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask some questions. Police officer questions. It's about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. Could you help me get that dead body down from a tree? You might have noticed there's one hanging on a tree behind the hostile cafeteria. Oh my, he smiles pleasantly. Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt, a steel-reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with this murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. You're a community leader. Help your community out. You can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. He licks his fat lips and smiles. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. He picks up the handset of a radio phone to his right, then clicks a button. Jean-Luc, my boy, I'm sending two police officers down. They have a dead body and a tree problem they need help with. Namely, they need it to be taken down. And Jean, please take it easy with the race science. That's a yes to getting the body down. No to the race science. He hangs up and turns back to you. <laughs> you can find Jean-Luc down at the gates. He turns back. He's the big, impressive one. You know, tattoos, muscles, ethnic looking. Can't miss him. Great guy. I want to talk about the hanging. Well, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez, he nods. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to help you, like I'm helping you with the body. Secret test complete. Interview the union boss. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much talk about it. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. I sense there's a but. But there's a thing that keeps me uh, that, that that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hemming. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. The lieutenant said with a slow nod. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. Suddenly, he slaps on his forehead. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door opening machines. Incredibly t talented at opening doors. opened a few doors in my life. And I'm sure you're going to open this one with flying colors, Harry, he chuckles. This really is very simple, and there's nothing shady about it. Hmm. Hmm. Whose door is it? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lived there. Nothing for you to worry about. You mean by a weasel? Allow a blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. He removes his glasses and rubs his nose. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want, I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. He puts his glasses back on. I, I don't know. Uh, this is uh. I feel like he's he's trying to uh, he's he's trying to make us like we're the police. He should do what we say. God, I wish I took the authority uh, <laughs> signature trait. <laughs> um, I bet you don't even know anything about the hanging. Harry, my dear friend, he sinks down deep in, deeper into the chair. I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Why don't you just open it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have the extraordinary physique you do. He slams his fists together. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. He turns back to you, so what'll it be, Harry? I'm not doing that. Of course, Harry, I understand. But if that's the case, I don't think we'll ever find your gun. Even if ever worse, we won't be able to speak like equals about the murder. Perhaps this was just bad timing for you. Know that you can always come back to me. I really hope you do. He winks at you for your sake, my sake, and for your gun's sake, too. So, he has my gun, or knows who has it. That's what I think. Lieutenant sighs, yes, we both understand what you mean. 
This may be the only way, he thinks. I won't hold it against you. In fact, we probably should reconsider later. Right. All right, Everett, I'm going to leave now, but we might t we might talk again later. Wait, he reaches into his drawer and pulls out a plastic card. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Great, wouldn't want to get stuck in here. Here, you're one of us now, a real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Wow. Well, the plot thickens. So that's, uh, what do we got here? Getting the body down. Go go to Measure Head in the gates and ask him how to get the body down. Well, I think that's what we'll do next episode. Taxidermy fish that tells time. That's what we'll do next episode. <coughs> I feel uh, I feel like we've uh, we've advanced a lot here. Uh, this guy's a this guy's a jerk. Uh, uh, we don't like him one bit, I don't think. Uh, and he probably he seems to be holding our gun hostage in exchange for. Uh, for, uh, yeah, some, he wants us to help him do something sketchy, I think. He, he also straight up offered us a bribe as soon as we, uh, as soon as we, um, got in here. So, and he knows our name, Harry Dubois. So, yeah, exciting stuff. I think next, uh, next episode, the top priority will be getting the body down. But, uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you, if you did, hit that like button and, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. See you next time. Ciao.